Hi guys! Today's Friday and uh, I've taken another half day off work. This is starting to feel a little bit like the movie Groundhog Day because I remember doing the exact same thing last Friday. I'm on my way up to the boat but uh, first let's just stop here and uh, have a quick peek inside this uh, store. This thing should greatly ease one of the uh, projects I've got planned this weekend, but uh, we'll get to that later. We're finally here at the marina in Skive. Now it felt like the trip up here today took a lot longer than it usually does, but uh, that's probably just because I'm so anxious to get started. Dragging back and forth all of this stuff between the house and the boat is really annoying, but thank God for these little carts here at the marina. Finally, I'm aboard the boat. I've got all of my stuff here and I'm ready to get started. But before we get started, there's two things I want to mention. First thing, I know I promised you guys a review of the products I've received from Black Bear Boating and Leisure.com last week, but uh, I wanted to get some real world experience using these products before doing a review. And as we all know, I didn't quite get around to glassing in these stringers last weekend. But uh, we're just about to do that, so hopefully sometime next week I'll be able to publish a review of the products I received. Second thing, every time I upload one of these videos with me doing projects aboard the boat instead of going sailing, I get at least a few comments saying, hey, you should go sailing instead. And I would love to go sailing, but there's good reason I don't go sailing. I grew up, like most kids, I'm sure, listening to a lot of stories, you know, fables, sagas, fairy tales, and one of these stories in particular stuck with me, and that's Ether's fable of the ant and grasshopper. Now, I'm sure most of you guys know that story, but if there's a few of you that don't, the moral of that story is about the virtue of hard work and planning ahead. And the story actually relates in quite a few ways to my situation here aboard the boat because I don't want to be the grasshopper in that story. I don't want to be caught with my pants down once the first blizzard comes around. And as you can see, it's, it's quite a big mess here aboard the boat. I can't live aboard the boat while doing these projects and I'm working with toxic stuff, so me sleeping aboard the boat is out of the question. So really, I would love to go sailing, but I have to focus on getting these projects done because once the house sells, I won't have anywhere to go but to go aboard the boat. This is my home. I don't have anywhere else to go. So for now it's projects and we'll go sailing later. Enough yammering on, let's get started. The first step would be to prep these quarter sawn pieces of oak. Luckily for me these pieces of oak comes attached to this uh, backing material so it's actually more like sheets of oak instead of just tiny pieces of oak. That makes prepping the 240 I think pieces I'll need for the stringers a lot easier. Just to make absolutely sure I'll give these sheets a quick sanding and a wipe with some grease remover on both sides. <laughs> Now I have 284 of these little guys. Once I got my technique down, it actually didn't take all that long. Like I've mentioned before, I'm gonna be stacking three of these on top of each other, but I don't want them to be joining up like that, I don't think so at least. I think it'd be much better for them to be sort of slightly offset. So for me to be able to do that, I'll need to trim a few of these. The last time I used my jigsaw I thought it was kind of slow, but I can certainly see why. There's absolutely no teeth left on this old blade. Let's go down and see if offsetting these little pieces of oak have any influence at all. It looks to me like the further aft we go up here in the v berth, the more curved there is to the hull, and that makes sense, I guess. But uh, let's do a quick test. Thank you. 
The one furthest to the aft is the one without any offset pieces, and I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera, but there's quite a noticeable angle where the two blocks meet up. I like the curve of the stringer with the offset pieces a lot more. If you look closely at the one with the offset pieces, you can see there's some gaps of air in between each of the oak pieces. But hey, that, that's okay. The uh, thing the epoxy will take care of that, and this will be plenty strong. Oh, and I almost forgot about this. This is our little test piece to see if we could get away with using Scotchwell 74 instead of that other glue. So let's give this a pull. If you look really closely, you can see that's actually bits of foam there. So that means that it's the foam that's failed and not the adhesive. And that's awesome. That means I can use Scotchwell 74 if I want to. I'm not 100% sure that I want to, but uh, we'll get to why in a later video. Welcome to the disclaimer portion of this video. Remember, what I'm doing here is a way of doing it. It's not the way of doing it. For example, building stringers out of these things, well that's quite odd, but these things were what I had lying around and they'll do a fine job at what I need them to do. So that's what I chose to go with. With that out of the way, let's move on. Before I'm ready to start mixing epoxy, there's still a few things we need to take care of. First, we need to give the hull a quick wipe using some grease remover. Of course, there's no need for us to wipe down the areas of the hull that we won't be adhering anything to today. Next up, I want to make sure if I drop a little bit of epoxy or it drips down or whatever, it's not going to get squeezed in between the bunk bed and the hull. I don't want to epoxy those two together, that would be really annoying. I'll use a piece of wood as a spacer. I'll then cover that with some plastic and secure the plastic to the hull using masking tape. That should give me a bit of security. Before I start epoxying things, I'll just grab a quick bite. Look at that! Real food aboard the boat! Wow! That fridge is awesome! Det er noteret du. Det er godt. Hej hej! Wow, that that was the real estate guy. Um, a couple of days ago, a young woman looked at my house and uh, she wants to have a second look. So uh, yeah, this could be it guys. Fingers crossed, for God's sake, fingers crossed. Although I really do need to finish the projects first. So uh, yeah, we better get going. In this corner we've got West Systems, and in this corner we've got Mass Epoxies. Dun, 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 dun. I won't go into any detail about the differences between these two brands in this video. I'll do that in the review video, just to keep things a bit more search engine friendly. Let's mix up some epoxy. I'm gonna start from the forward part of the V-Birth and work my way back. I'll be doing both sides at the same time. That means I could have an issue with pot life, so I'm gonna mix up rather small batches. Oh yeah, and I picked up some of these uh, disposable plates. These are, however, made out of plastic, and I have no idea if epoxy is gonna melt through this, so uh, we'll just do a small test at first. You're probably gonna notice, so I might as well mention it anyway. For the uh, West System stuff, I have their pump kit. I don't have any pump kit for the uh, mass epoxy stuff. There is a pump kit but I don't really think I need it because uh, the mass epoxy stuff is a 1 to 2 ratio which is really easy to measure. That was 60 milliliters of resin, now we'll need to add 30 milliliters of hardener. Now we'll add silica. This is the thickened mass epoxy's epoxy. I guess that makes sense. Let's mix up some West systems.
And of course I've just been a bad boy. I should of course have been wearing my mask while mixing all of that stuff. But uh, I don't think you guys will be able to hear what I'm saying once I have this on. So I'll just uh, hold my breath. I've just squeezed out a bit of resin and hardener just to make sure that the pumps are primed. Now, in all honesty, I should probably measure to make sure that these pumps are calibrated correctly, but, uh, well, I'm feeling lucky. There's a slight color difference. The uh, West System stuff is a little bit more yellow than the uh, Mass Epoxies. That, that doesn't matter at all. It has no influence, but it's kind of funny. Let's head up into the V-Birth and start on those stringers. <coughs> Slight change of plans. Back there you can see the first two stringers are in place and that was perfect. The, the process is good, but it turns out mixing up two batches of epoxy might be kind of pushing the envelope a little bit. Uh, so I think I'm just going to stick with one batch at the time from now on. Here we've got a new batch of thickened mass epoxy. So uh, let's see if we can get a couple of stringers up there. Okay, so you guys remember the lines that we drew on the hull using the laser, right? So the process is quite simple. You grab a piece of oak, you slab on some thickened epoxy, and now this first layer, the layer that goes against the hull, that needs to be quite thick because the hull is quite uneven actually. And don't worry about the uh, excess thickened epoxy that will squeeze out, we'll remove that later. Now that our offset is ready, we can go ahead and build the rest of the stringer. I've just cut these three pieces to length, so now we should be able to put the finishing touches on that stringer. Now that I've shown you guys the process, uh, I'm gonna put my mask back on and finish the rest of the stringers. It's getting late, so I just want to show you guys a quick glimpse of the rebirth before heading back home, and I'll probably end this video back at the house. Um, as you can see, all the stringers are in place, and uh, I've applied a single layer of fiberglass on top of them. I'm sorry about the uh, somewhat odd ending to this video. Now that the house is going to be shown tomorrow, I need to be there to take Jürgen for a walk so that the potential buyer and the real estate guy can have a bit of peace and quiet. So that means I can't go to the boat, and uh, I really want those stringers to be ready for paint on Sunday. So I had to apply that layer of fiberglass before heading back home today. Oh, but uh, hey, at least they're ready for paint on Sunday. Like most kids do, listening to a lot of stories. Story, uh, fa 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 fairy, 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 what? These little things. As I mentioned, I'm going to be stacking them up. Three on top of it, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. To get the correct sort of depthness here. Depthness. Depth, Jesus, that again. Offset pieces to have a soft of a soft of a mm. set pieces to have a sort of a softer code curve. Actually, there's still a few things we need to take care of. Up, what things we need to take care of? First, we need to give the hole. What? I've just squeezed out a bit of uh, eat. I've just nope. I've just squeezed. I've just. <laughs> Yerkul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. To be notified about new content, please click subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I suggest you check out the introduction playlist. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment.